I, th- I think it has a lot to do with imposter syndrome. You know, I, I go through the motions trying to look normal, whatever normal is, um, and getting through a day. And that's no way to live. ADHD Rewired, episode 387. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode Episode, including links to any resources we mention on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter, you can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups, and you can learn all about our intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. You can do all of this at our website, ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. Today's guest, we have the one and only Barb McDonough, the, uh, my executive assistant here at ADHD Rewired. I am, uh, I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Are you nervous? Um, a little bit, but not as much as I thought I would be. I'm more like excited and yeah. Because we were supposed to do this yesterday and then um, you told me you threw your back out. Yes, I did. And didn't you say you were, you were thinking about a, a profession in acting? I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> totally messed with you. Okay. So let me, uh, let me tell you a little bit about who Barb is here. Um, so you've, you've been working here for almost two years. I mean, two years in October, right? October, yeah. Okay. So you got your uh, BA from Columbia College in Chicago, majoring in poetry and a master's degree in teaching from National Lewis University. Uh, So that looking back, you realize that these stories that you told yourself about your piles uh, in the house to the different jobs that you had was just the way you were. Mm -hmm. The last two years, you said, has been eye-opening. Uh, you left your part-time teaching position to try something different and you interviewed for the position of executive assistant here. And uh, you said you kind of would tell yourself that teaching wasn't for you, but now I guess realizing and coming to know how ADHD has affected uh, you and your life and your decisions um, makes you think differently about that that past. Um, you're married, you have a a 13 year old son who you're very fond of. Very, very. And he's on his way to high school. And I think that the, a fun place to start is the, this idea that when um, you started here, you were, you were interested in ADHD because. My son was diagnosed many years ago when he was young, probably six or seven years old. So, and something, I don't know if I've shared with you, my sister-in-law, I was talking to her about, you know, I'm, I'm going to change position. She goes, you should just, you know, and I was thinking going back to law firms because I, I have uh, worked in a lot of law firms. She goes, you know what, you should try something different. So when I saw this ad, um, it was definitely different. And I said, you know, I'm going to give this a try. Nice. Nice. All right. So when you came in, you were, you were neurotypical when you came in. Yes, I thought so. So, so what was it that made you kind of go, oh, wait a minute? Listening to everybody's stories in the community. You know, I was reading those Facebook uh, community. You know, we had that secret Facebook group that you have to fill out a, an application for. And just reading those stories. And then, of course, talking to the admin, the wonderful admin we have here. Um, I'm like, hmm, you know, being curious and saying, boy, maybe that's what's going on with me. Sounds a lot like me, you were yeah. thinking. Yeah. So I remember when you first started uh, reading through those Facebook applications, that that was hard for you. It was really hard. It was really hard because the, just the lifetime of stories, some people would share so much um, and you just, you feel for them and they found a place they can, you know, a community they can talk to people who've been through the same thing. So, and some of them were, yeah, they were hard to read. Because there was uh, there was a lot of heartache and and trauma. Yeah, and you're not trained as a mental health professional, exactly. Right? So you don't have that that background, right? Right. 
So, um, so yeah, it was a little, little difficult, but, um, got over it cause it was helping them. So, so you're working with me here for almost two years now. Um, you know, we're obviously a, a growth business. What we do is help people grow. And I think it's, it's, um, for anyone who has worked with me in the past, it's kind of hard to not, I think, self-examine uh, yes. as, and you have done a lot of self-examination. I have. And uh, that's, uh, it's been a really, um, I've just been kind of in awe of how, like how you've really leaned into so much really hard stuff from like, you know, acknowledging some of your conflict avoidance to like going just and having tough conversations with people. You're like, I'm going to do this. Like it might take yeah. a little bit of time to recover afterwards, but you, but you leaned in and, and have done that. What, what has helped you do that? I think it's just, yeah, working here every day. Um, and, it, and you just learn you, people have read books that, that have helped them. And I've, I've read them as well. And uh, it's just in it, and it's a process, you know, I've been here almost two years, but it's just been a little process of just, Hmm. Like I was, I remember being very kind of defensive when we were talking about some things that needed to get done or changed. Um, and, and I love, you know, Eric and other people in the community always be curious. And that was, I think my first step was just stopping, thinking about my reaction, think about what needed to get done. And it, it's just, it's just eye opening. It's just amazing. So that was, I think the start of it, the journey. Um, shall I continue? Yes, please. I will continue. And uh, a little over a year ago, I decided to go and uh, get diagnosed, you know, see if I had ADHD and go ahead and get the evaluation. And um, like many stories I've heard, the first evaluation, she could not conclude that it was ADHD. Definitely. So um, at the same time, I started some therapy as well with uh, a therapist who focused on ADHD adults as well. And I just mentioned to him, I said, I was kind of surprised they didn't ask people in my life, like my husband I've been with for 16 years, didn't send him maybe a survey and see what he sees. So he said, you know what, why, why don't we do that? Why don't we take another look? And he, he did conclude that inattentive ADHD is uh, what I have. So that was the next part of the journey. And that's one of the most commonly missed uh, you know, mm -hmm. presentations of ADHD and especially in, in women. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I was glad he was very open to, yeah, let's, let's take a look and just, and I was not surprised at anything my husband said on the survey or, you know, indicated because I, I was even becoming more self-aware of things that were going on, just um, showing up in the house and the way I, I handled things and tried to handle everything. And I, I can't. Can I ask you to um, talk a little bit about how uh, some of the the stuff that you've been kind of working on and, and learning uh, on yourself, how has that, how has that kind of gone home with you in, in your relationship mm, with, with your husband? It, 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 yeah, it definitely has. Cause I was not aware at the time, but started to become more and more aware of how I want, do I want, yeah, maybe I do. Maybe I want to control everything or do everything because I want it kind of my way. I can say that now. I couldn't say it two years ago. <laughs> mm, so just kind of that acceptance of, I do want things a certain way. Right, right. And that I can't do everything. Mm. So I started asking for help. And fortunately, I have a partner who is very open to that. He may not be able to see when I need help, but if I say, hey, you know what, can you call or make this phone call to the insurance company or or whatever it is, so I don't have to do all this executive functioning um, handling of everything. I had no idea what I was doing to myself. I felt mm. just um, exhausted every day because I was trying to do it all. So, and then also with my son, now he's 13 and just, you know what? He asked me what's for lunch or what's for breakfast. Every, you know what? Check out the kitchen and you, <laughs> like I take it upon myself and then I'm trying to think of everything and it, it does. It just, it just, it drains you. Yeah. It drains you. So that's how it's come to show up at home and it's become, it's be, just become better, better situation. And then they're becoming more aware of just asking, do you need me to do this? As opposed to, you know, I'm doing it all. I, I can't tell you how wonderful that is. That's awesome. <laughs> Talk about boundaries. Hmm. Sounds okay. like, so I know um, whether it's been here or at home, I think you've shared some stuff about how 
like you've been able to you know, just advocate and communicate like what you can and can't do. And I think it seems like you've been doing this in a more sort of unapologetic way, like you're just more confident in the understanding of what you can do and what you need. Right. It's interesting to talk about this now that I've gotten through that and I can look back because with boundaries um, and I think, I don't know, I get overloaded um, auditory overload. I have no idea what that's like. I Barb. know, I know. So we won't talk about it too much. So, <laughs> but you know, the TV was always on. My son is very talkative and we're glad he's that way as opposed to being quiet. Yeah. Um, he loves to be around us and he's into organs, orchestrians. He's, he's very bright and love to hear what he's learning about. Um, but it was, it's became too much. And I'm sure there's maybe one or two people that might be able to relate to this. I'd be in the kitchen, you know, the TV's on in the living room. My son's talking to me, my husband's saying, so what about this? Or what about, or we need to plan this next? And I felt like If anybody knows what an old transistor radio sounds like when you're trying to find the channel, I I describe that to my therapist that way. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I can't tune in because there's just so much. So boundaries, uh, we're turning off the TV um, like at eight o'clock. We've been having dinners without the TV on at the table. And we all recognize how more relaxed we are Mm. because of that. And I will, if I'm starting to get overloaded, then I get frustrated and it looks like I'm angry, you know? So I've, um, I tell uh, my husband and my son, you know what? I need some silence. I just need some time. And they'll, yeah, give me, give me a break um, from that. You thought about getting a pair of these uh, Bose noise canceling headphones. From absolutely. Us. Absolutely. Actually, and I've mentioned to you before this, um, I'm talking, I'm having um, that great book, Crucial Conversations mm-hmm. that I've read, having those conversations with my husband. And I love that. I, I would think, you know, two years ago, it would have been a little more passive aggressive or, mm-hmm. you know, because I didn't know how to talk about what I needed. Mm-hmm. And I am, I'm being unapologetic and saying, I need a space of my own. I don't have a room of my own. And he's a carpenter and he's very creative. Um, And I said, and this is something that came out in therapy too. Like, just ask him, don't tell him exactly what you want. Ask him, maybe he could come up with something. He's a creative person. Like, don't, again, take it on yourself. I have to figure this out. So I brought it up to him and he's, he's going to think about it and yeah, going to figure that out. That's awesome. Yeah. I know that one of the things that you have um, shared with me is that, um, you know, throughout your life, there's some times where you haven't, you felt like you haven't been seen. How would you say that just what you've been learning about yourself here and in and, and therapy, um, how has that changed and, and how has that been evolving for you? I, th- I think it has a lot to do with imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I go through the motions trying to look normal whatever normal is, um, and getting through a day. And that's no way to live. It isn't. Um, so being able to talk and share my story has been a big deal. And it took me a while to be able to talk to just one-on-one somebody here, whether Mm -hmm. it's a coach or an admin that have become my friends, um, to really talk to them about what's going on. So, um, and I've lost my train of thought. It happened. Was it because you hit what, the table then you were wondering about that? I was wondering about <laughs> if the audio was going to go off or if I, yeah, because I hit a wire. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's, um, let's do this. Let's, let's actually take a quick break. And, uh, and when we come back, I want to kind of dive a little bit more into, into that. And then um, I think we were talking about maybe... Uh, and a little bit of some coaching around around something. I'm not even sure if we've decided on what that's going to be about, but we'll, we'll no, decide we when we get there. Sounds good. We will be right back. Okay, wait, Barb. So we have we have ads right in front of us. And so what we are going to try to do is um, be kind of efficient on our time here. Yes. So we're going to just include the recording of the ads in what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's do that. I haven't seen a look at this yet, by the way. Either have I. Okay. So let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, which, which page are you on? I'm on coaching group ad copy. 
Okay, I have the, I have the study hall ad copy. I think you may have one of my pages. Ooh, do I have two? Maybe. I think I might. Okay. Let's see, I have two. No, I have all four. I have three pages, and the other one might be right here. Aha! <laughs> Trying to blame me. All right, hey, you want to start it? Which one am I reading? Coach in the coaching group ad. Oh, all right, I will. <laughs> Support for ADHD Rewired comes from the ADHD Rewired coaching community. We're well into the 25th season of our intensive online coaching and accountability groups. And the 48 members who joined our summer season are already working together to get their ADHD Rewired. How would it feel to work beside other people with ADHD? You, now, you've done this before, bro. I have. You were a participant. In yes, we haven't. I haven't even talked I know, about it. Ha- maybe we can talk about that after the ad break. Okay. How amazing would it feel to be a part of a community of people who just get it? Barb, how, how does that feel? It feels wonderful. Is that, I, I wish they could see my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is It is kind of lighting up. Wouldn't it be worth it if you can gain more clarity on what you want out of life to better understand your ADHD and to make forward momentum and the things that matter most to you? If you're wondering if you can live intentionally and work smarter with ADHD, your support can start with a group of people where you will be seen, understood, and accepted. The ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Groups do more than just show you the tools. It really is about connection, acceptance, and self-discovery. If you've ever felt like you've had to learn how to navigate with your ADHD alone, When you join our award-winning coaching and accountability groups, you can be sure you won't have to learn alone. These groups are tailored for people with ADHD by people with ADHD. If you want to get your ADHD rewired and rewrite your ADHD story, head on over to coachingrewired.com to get your name on the fall interest list. Then keep an eye out in your email and keep listening each week so you can stay up to date when the registration events for our fall season begin. And I know that after we record this this episode, you're going to actually go send that email because we, we like buried the headline on this ad, Barb. Yes. The registration <laughs> is on Thursday. We kick off our registration event. So um, if you are interested in joining us for this fall, Thursday is the kickoff event. If you want to guarantee the section that you want to be in, that only happens if you make it to our kickoff event. Exactly. Because we've had times where we've had, you know, 12, 15 people that come to the kickoff event and 10 of them or 11 of them all want to be in one section. It's kind of random, but when that happens, then space gets, uh, you know, right. the, the options are reduced. And we have people who are very disappointed who go to a later event and the section is full and yeah there's not much you know we can do at that point so definitely if you're you know you want this you got to come to our kickoff event on august 5th all right go to coachingrewired.com to learn more click on that button you can fill out the form and we will automatically send you your invite website again coachingrewired.com that's coachingrewired.com Paying bills, writing reports, doing the dishes, cleaning out the clutter, calling insurance companies, scheduling appointments, updating resumes, doing paperwork, studying, and even emptying the litter box. What do all these things have in common? Well, they're not always fun, but they are things that our members of the Adult Study Hall membership community have completed since joining our virtual co-working space at adultstudyhall.com. Sure, we all have things on our to-do list we'd rather not be doing, but with the Adult Study Hall membership community, you won't have to do them alone. With real-time accountability, our members are getting things done that have been on their list for months and even years. Access to Adult Study Hall membership community is only $19.99 a month. With your membership comes access to the Adult Study Hall 24-7 room, or ASH 24-7, a dedicated Zoom room that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can jump in at any time, let everyone know what you're working on in the Zoom chat, and then get started. It doesn't even matter where you are in the world. We have people in there 
24 7. Also included are guided and facilitated sessions, what we're calling ASH Plus sessions. If you have a dreaded task, then you can join Taskbusters every Thursday to get started. You can even work on job related. Um, Do it again. <laughs> you can even work on job search related tasks, work on your resume, update your LinkedIn profile, and work with an HR specialist in our career accelerator session also on Thursdays. Do you know that Kat's been doing, because she's the person running, uh, that she's our HR specialist. She's been doing like these mini masterminds with the people that are coming. Like that she's like really diving into problem solving with, with these people. It's awesome. It is. It's great. If you've been meaning to clean out your garage. I have been meaning to for a while. Or whatever clutter you have, you can join our clean and declutter session every Sunday. And new to our Ash Plus sessions. Wow, you have something new? I do. Whoa. And the person that is hosting this one yeah. is pretty awesome. Really? Mm-hmm. A writer's group to help you overcome your writer's block now happening every Monday. With Barb. Yes. Our first session was wonderful. We have 14 people. You got to come and check it out. With the Adult Study Hall membership community, you won't have to work alone again. For only $19.99 a month, you'll have access to ASH 24-7, all of our current and upcoming ASH Plus sessions, and a community of supportive, like-wired brains who truly understand the struggles our ADHD can present. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably have ADHD, right? So why not join the virtual community built just for you? The first week is free. You can join us by going to adultstudyhall.com. That's adultstudyhall.com. We hope to see you there. All right, we are back. I'm not used to doing like ads in between, like actually in real time. So now I'm like, shit, what are we talking about? Actually, you brought up how I didn't feel like I was being seen. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what we were talking I think about? It was. Yes. Yeah. Where should we go with that? Well, how does, you know, what was it that helped you recognize that that was one of the things that was going on for you? Actually, um, you know, I went through the coaching groups and again, hearing people's stories and I was kind of, I was jealous of people who were just themselves. Like mm. they weren't hiding anything. They were saying what was going on in their life. And I, w- I wasn't there yet. I was not there yet. Um, so that, that was a big part of it. And just, uh, just sharing and, and just, you feel like, oh, you know, I'm not the only one struggling, you know, all of us struggle and, and just sharing your wins too. Um, and recognizing your wins. Cause sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves and don't, don't do that. So that was, yeah, that was really the start. How do you think you have been on not being so hard on, on yourself? <laughs> Um, I'm pretty hard on myself. <laughs> I think my boss knows that. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting though, because I, I, I see, and I think this is so common with, with so many of us that we have these, like, we, we have these periods where we're kind of kicking ass and like, we're confident and we kind of feel on top of our game. And then there's these periods where we're just like kind of struggling. And then, mm. you know, there's this, maybe this tendency to hide a little bit when we're kind of in struggle. Right. Mm-hmm. And I know that, that one of the conversations we, I think, used to have more frequently and haven't, I don't think I've had that, that often. So occasionally we, we, we kind of check in on this. But when I'll ask you about something and you'd be like, Eric, do you realize how many other things I have to do? And, I uh, do say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and I'm, what I'm trying to do is just help you prioritize. And if you, like, you have too many other things, like let's work together on figuring out what's most important. And like, I mm-hmm. like, you know, I think with like all things in life, like I don't think we you can't get everything done. Right. Which is why like so much of what we do from a productivity standpoint in our groups is focusing on prioritization. And that's where I was recognized how, you know, I was a little defensive. I'm, you're, you're just asking me a question and I'm just like, oh, he's, he's saying that I'm not working on the right thing or something, but we, we've come to a part where we can really talk about it. You know, I send you what my priorities are for mm-hmm. the day and you, oh, maybe this or maybe that. And we could have those discussions as opposed to me being like, yeah, like I can't get, I can't get it all done. I can't. 
So, so has there been anything kind of maybe specific that maybe a, a mindset shift that has helped you kind of stay in that place? You're like, okay, because they're, they're having, I think, more times recently where you just come to me and you're like, I don't know what to focus on right now. Mm-hmm. And I actually find that really helpful when I do that. Mm, okay. I have to do that more often when it happens. So, well, and I, I deal yeah. with the same stuff. Yeah. Like I have so many yeah. things that like, you, you know, we can be so close to our stuff that it's hard to really like take that sort of objectivity uh, towards it. Right. Right. Because we're like, oh God, like oh, here's the thing I was supposed to do two weeks ago. Like it's not that important, but I know I was supposed to do it two weeks ago, but I have these other things that are really important that I really mm-hmm. need to be focusing on now. So I let that thing. And so I think just like having the conversations about that and just to explore um, cause I think that, you know, with our, cause our the business is very, you know, cyclical, like we have mm-hmm. these sort of 10, 12 week sort of cycles of, of the business. Right. And I think like every season for our coaching groups, we kind of, we plug in a little more of like systemizing it to make it easier each time. Um, cause I'm like, you know, I think the iteration is the name of the game. Like that's mm-hmm. how we grow. It's like, we want all the growth to happen like immediately, if not yesterday. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's really just recognizing, all right, what's this, what's one piece we can kind of focus on and improve? Mm-hmm. And then next season, well, what's another piece we can focus on and, and improve? Right. And I think a big, um, you were asking about like the mind shift, mm-hmm. because I think I was really just, I couldn't pull back from a task. Like, I just need to get this done. And I know you've done a really good job of just saying, we have to come up with a system there's so many things out there to help us automate some of these um, tasks that you, you just shouldn't be spending a lot of time on. So that, yeah, it's taken me a long time to get there. Cause I just, and I just don't like disappointing people. I really don't. Um, and it's so hard to get to everybody, you know, quickly. Yeah. It doesn't happen, but that's a big shift. I'm pulling myself back and say, okay, how can I automate this? Or how can I make this quicker? Whatever you know, I'm trying to do. So have, have you had uh, any time yet to really evaluate Zendesk? I know we just kind of started using I that. spent a lot of time on that yesterday. Nice. I know Eric uh, kind of uh, insinuated I was acting yesterday because we were supposed to do our podcast <laughs> yesterday, but I was not. I, I could not believe I threw out my back that day. So it's like, oh no, is he going to believe me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe you. But I sat on the couch. I thought, you know what? I've got some just you know, quiet time to work on um, Zendesk. And for those of you who don't know, it's you that help button that you'll see at the bottom of a website and it pulls you into a database of information and you can get questions answered quickly um, instead of somebody sending me an email or text and having to wait. So I worked on that quite a bit yesterday, actually. Because I know that that was, you know, that's been one of the the things we've been trying to uh, problem solve around. It's like, you know, we have a lot of people who reach out to us and we have, you know, we have email, we have Facebook, there's, there's Twitter, there's the contact forms from the website there, and there's all these different pieces. And we know that sometimes people will slip through the cracks and it's right. like, oh, like, we're in, and, you know, so it's like, all right, let's stop trying harder. Let's, let's try smarter. <clears throat> let's, yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, see. Grab some water, grab some water. <laughs> I will grab some water. Um, so yeah, that's a big part of, um, where you are with your business too, is just, we're trying to come up with things that, you know, we, we want to get whatever our community needs. So, um, and we'll, yeah. And also in a way that also works for, for us as people also with ADHD, Mm -hmm. right? right? You know, one of the things that, that I've been really kind of addressing personally, uh, over the last, kind of realizing over the last, uh, several weeks for sure is that um like the ignoring that that need to take time off like after a while is like it 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 won't leave you alone Mm -hmm. i've been kind of having a little bit of some ef burnout um so i've been trying to take a little bit more more time and that's something that i've been really uh and i know you're kind of rededicating to getting out of here at 5 30 and Mm-hmm. Um, cause I think we both have that tendency to do one more thing. Absolutely. Working lots of hours. Um, I just, uh, sent a message to, you know, all our admin in arc 25 that's going on right now. And I says, the universe is telling me something cause I had an MRI on my knee this week. Um, I have um, some kind of throat issues. Like it has to do with acid reflux, which <laughs> is not good. And then, um, throwing out my back and it's like, I need, I need to get back to exercise and just 
self-care doesn't, um, you can't set it aside. You just yeah. can't. Well, Barb, just so you know, I think I told you this when you're ready. I bought a couple of extra pickleball paddles. So when you're ready. I think in a couple of weeks, let's, yeah, we have to just set, set the date and we'll let everybody know how it went. Especially if I beat you, we have to definitely <laughs> get it, put it on the website or something. That would be, uh, I, I would, I would be really impressed. W- really? If, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I want to kind of circle to, I know where I'm looking at the time here. Um, I have group here in 15 minutes. So um, let's take one more really quick break and um, we're going to, let's, let's jump right into our ads because this is just how we're doing this episode. Let's do it. All right. I wonder how many days these pieces of paper are going to stay on my desk for. Until I take them off oh, yeah, and uh-huh. <laughs> throw them away. True story. <laughs> All right. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from our patrons who support us at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. Do you want additional support and more perks from this podcast? Go to ADHD. As opposed to like another podcast. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Go to ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon to see the levels and all the perks. You can support this podcast starting at $5 a month, where you can get ad-free episodes of this show right into your favorite podcast player. At $25 a month, you can join Eric. That was a nice ad lib because I said me. Yes. You can join Eric for a group coaching call every fourth Tuesday of the month. Our next Patreon only group coaching call is on Tuesday, July 27th at, oh. No, that is not correct. We, that is, we, we just that was passed that. Week's. That was last week's. Um, so it is the fourth Tuesday of the month. Of August. Of August. And that date is, is, is August 20th. All right. That was smooth. So just $25 a month. And our next Patreon-only group coaching call with Eric is Tuesday, August 24th at 3 p.m. Central. Yes. That's 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern. Go ahead. <laughs> what was that? It was your time timer. Uh-oh. Foul. Destruction in the office. Okay. Because yeah. I have too much shit on my desk. <laughs> Do you know we're in the middle of an ad? I think I just realized that. Okay, so um, you can support us by going to patreon.com slash ADHD Rewired. Just come to, come to our website, ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. Um, click the Patreon tab at the top of that page. Your support is so appreciated. And uh, oh, at the $10 a month level, you can get the, record, the audio recordings of our monthly coaching calls. And I think for the last several months, I've, I've been pretty good at actually posting those like within an hour after uh, that coaching call uh, happens. So yeah, um, it's been, it's been good. They're, they're fun to do. You can learn a lot from even listening to the coaching calls. Definitely. All right. So uh, come support us. ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. And thanks. If you like ADHD Rewired, then check out all of the other shows we have here on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. We have a bunch of them. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash podcast network or just click the podcast tab at the top of ADHDrewired.com. We have one for if your focus is on kids. We have one if you want a shorter episode of just tips. We have one for women. We have one that deals with issues of around diversity. And we have another one coming out in August with one of our coaches, Roxy Martin and Will Kerb, Packing Your ADHD. So go check out all of that stuff. All the links are there. All the links are there. And um, if you've been thinking about leaving a review, please, 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 please do so. Um, I was recent. So I've been the number one rated podcast on Apple Podcasts for a long time. I'm not going to mention who it was, but there has been a, a another podcast that's not part of our network that has recently um surpassed me in ratings good and for her good for her absolutely yep. absolutely yep um that's awesome because that means more people are getting the help that they need mm-hmm. but but i really like being able to say that we're the number one rated podcast on apple podcast um so help us out. oh my god <laughs> just I, would just, I would just keep the time timer i'm gonna keep there. the time timer down okay uh let's transition back to um we're gonna do five minutes of coaching ready let's do it let's transition sounds okay Hey, Barb. Yes. What do you need some coaching around? 
Hmm. I want to say probably what what would you call it when you have you know you know how it is I got all this stuff to do and even I'll even tell you these are my five things and then all of a sudden it's four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm like whoa I didn't get to three of those or I didn't get to four of them (laughs) well let me ask you this on on the days that you're kicking ass what are you doing differently on those days hmm. Ash definitely helps. I know that because everybody's so supportive and they'll even like, if I say, man, I'm having trouble, um, you know, I'll put it in there, what I need to do and you get help. Um, and I honestly, I think my problem is just because something comes into my view (laughs) (laughs) and the list is over here. And for those of you who are listening, my my left arm is going off to the side saying all of a sudden it just kind of it, it just goes away. Um, yeah. And then it's a text or it's an email and I end up doing that. So, so when you know, one of the things we talked about is being clear on on priorities. And yes, part of your role is to respond to people. But if you're keeping those notifications on all the time, you're going to spend all day responding to people. So then you're kind of responding on everyone else's time. And because like, unless your only role was you're there to respond to people, but that's not your only role. That's just part of your role. Right. Right. So kind of figuring out when not only are you going to work on the responding, Mm -hmm. but when are you not going to be working on the responding and how do you, how do you shut those notifications off? Mm -hmm. Like what, what a, I know we've talked about this before and you're like, yeah, I'm going to shut shut the notifications off. Yep. Do you think you need more cues in your office to to like really remind yourself? And I th- and honestly, I think it's the would you call it a dopamine hit? Like you like, oh, I answered that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that felt good. Or I got back to this person. But then it's like the bigger maybe priority that I, I need to, you know, it, it takes longer, but then that feels good too. So how can you sort of cue your yourself? when you're working on sort of those important but not urgent type things, yeah. that there's actually a really sizable dopamine hit there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what can I do? I just had this idea of uh, like having on your list of important but not urgent stuff, like, you know, the email automations that we've been trying to, to work on. Um, having a little sign that says dopamine lives here. Oh, I that. like it. I like it. Exactly. No, seriously, right. I do. I need. I need something... And that visual, and I've done this before, I've printed out the list, but I need to like tape it somewhere with that, you know, something a little funny, like little, honestly, that would probably, that would probably work. I'm going to try that. I think to even just like reducing the visual sort of noise in a sense, because mm-hmm. I mean, you, your office is kind of like the command center. You have like some, like, I love the six month huge calendar. It's like, yes. I, I just love coming in there. And just, that saves you know, me a lot of time because I could just look up and mm-hmm. say, oh, this happened then or this is happening Mm -hmm. late. Yep. Absolutely. And so I think, you know, even like theming your days where it's, it's like this part of the day, like emails closed, Slack is closed. Like all the things are, are that sort of pop up as notifications are closed because you're working on um, a specific. I've never done that. I usually just leave everything open and I keep looking at it. So I should just close it and whatever time, you know, on on Slack, you can do, um, slash uh, do not disturb I think for like a considerable amount of time mm, okay all right yeah so yeah, I, I do know. need to do that because I, I can't it's hard for me to control myself <laughs> and not and not answer questions or not look at it well you know in the the ADHD brain we tend to uh, prioritize based on proximity not actual mm, priority right, right right which is why like leaving the applications and I'm so guilty of this myself too Right. Leaving the applications open and like part of it is like, oh, but we want to like we don't want to forget that we're working on this thing. But that's actually not the place to keep it. Like the place to keep it is in Asana. And you can, you know, just say like, all right, like I'm still working on this thing. This is an open loop. But then close the application so you can make more mindful choices on kind of what you're starting with. Yeah. And actually writing down things that work because I've done that before. And it is it like it's it's quieter, you know, because yeah. I only have four tabs open and it's stuff I'm working on. Because, yeah, I want to say I have, oh, my gosh, I probably have 25 tabs open right now, at least. So maybe 30. Yeah. Do you think that you could um, have a couple maybe chunks of, of time during the day where part of that routine of that part of the day is you close everything that pings at you? Yes. 
Definitely. Absolutely. That's how yeah. we, that's how we get into deep work mm-hmm. is like, you know, closing all the applications, like and, and just having active campaign and Google docs, like the, the things you need just for that. Even yesterday when I was just sitting on the easy chair in Zendesk, I, I have my laptop. I have one screen. Now, you know, my office, I have three and it's real easy to just be busy, you know, have all that busy stuff up and I have to, yeah, have to change that. Have you figured out how to make your three monitors mirror themselves instead of being separate displays? I have not. It might be something that would be fun to experiment with to see if like when you get okay. into when you want to do your sort of focused deep work. Yeah. That have your displays all be the same. Oh, right. Right. Okay. It was like, so when your head's yeah. supposed to look away because you're like, like almost unconsciously looking for a distraction, you're still actually looking at what you need to be doing. Yes. Mic drop. Barb, this was, I'm so glad we did this. I am so glad we did this too. This was great. This was great. Any final thoughts? Do what you need to do to stay curious in Mm. life. I can't hear it enough. I really can't. When somebody says be curious or what's going on here, um, because just life is better when you're just a little more self-aware and you're, you're trying to, you're trying to be better and be happier. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Transitions are hard, but I got to do one really fast. Let's cue the outro music. I don't hear anything. (laughs) That happens later. (laughs) This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find timestamped summaries and additional resources for each episode. Apply to join our free and secret Facebook community. Learn more about our award-winning intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. Join the Adult Study Hall virtual co-working membership community. Find all the other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content that you won't hear anywhere else. And... Use the search tool to find episodes on specific topics. You can do all of this at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click on the Patreon button. If you are a regular listener, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to you, the listener, but it's not free to produce. Plus, patrons get cool perks like ad-free episodes and access to recordings of coaching calls and $25 a month patrons can join me once a month for a group coaching call. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tibbers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Eric Tibbers. Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube to see selective interviews and other videos I've made. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, family, your therapists, your coaches, doctors, siblings, parents. And if you, your coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at the website, ADHDrewired.com. If you are a member of Chad, Ada, or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this show and all the shows on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. And if you really loved this particular episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I do count on you to help spread this message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any other app that supports reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Here is my list of must-listen-to audiobooks updated July 2021. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, attached by Amir Levin and Rachel Heller. Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Crucial Conversations by Carrie Patterson. The Coaching Habit by Michael Stainer. The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. 
Rest by Alex Sujong Kim Pang. The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Make It Stick. The Science of Successful Learning by Peter Brown. The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. I always recommend to my coaches and admin that they read that book. The One Thing by Gary Keller, a required reading for all of our coaching group members. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Baden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. And if you're looking for something a little bit more magical, I have fallen in love with the Harry Potter series and the narrator, Jim Dale, is amazing. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus, all of her stuff is great. Starting with Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or leader, be sure to check out her book, Dare to Lead. Do you have something that you would like to share? Click on the podcast tab at ADHD Rewired. Click the button to be a guest at the top of the page and schedule a 15-minute interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, growing, and connecting. Self-care is not selfish. No matter what you get done or don't get done, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. And we don't need to do them in the hardest way possible. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.